Yo. Word. Well, I think that's the best intro we've ever done. What are we playing, <laughs> Gabe? Um, well, as part of my uh, memorial video game series dedicated to people who've passed who I enjoyed, um, we're Sit playing one. Alien 3 on the SNES. Serious? How many of these are we doing today? Um, well, I got to think of a game for Philip Seymour Hoffman, but uh, aside from that, we're uh, pretty good, yeah. So th- we're playing no. Alien 3 on the SNES. Which is an incredibly boring game, but features the uh, wondrous creations of the now deceased uh, Swiss lunatic H.R. Uh, Geiger. That's the one. Who is uh, famously the designer of the alien. Uh, the designer of Alien. Um, Designed to look like a huge knob. <laughs> yeah. He just went, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a whole species built around rape and male sexual inadequacy problems. He was big on knobs, was old. Geiger. Well, just knobs and flesh generic. Yeah, gen- genitalia in general. Like, it was just lots of penetration in a lot of his landscapes. And pretty female faces Twisted surrounded in with, pipes. Yeah. Twisted into pipes and snake pipes and pipes that became other faces. Now, if I remember Alien 3 correctly, the film opens with the trashing the whole franchise. <laughs> yeah, that's actually um, in the original script. <laughs> it's just. Uh, Hicks survived. Oh, wait. No, he didn't. Bam. Nope. Let's ruin all this. Um, it's actually interesting because uh, David Fincher directed um, Alien 3. Yes, and of he's, Fight Club and yeah. uh, other things. Fight Club, yeah. It's really, really the only thing you need to know. Um, and he's had some interesting things to say and about seven. making Alien 3. Uh, and Alien 3 is another one of those really sort of fascinating Hollywood stories of how it wound up being what it was and the sort of kind of strange permutations that went through it. Because originally at the end of Alien 2, like, because, you know, the... Aliens. The, aliens, that's it, yeah. Not alien. Cause, well, the tagline for, you know, Alien was in space, no one can hear you scream. scream. Yeah. Yes. Um, they were going to build on that. There's, I think there's even promo posters still out you can find pictures of that suggested Alien 3 was going to take place on Earth. Yes. And they went was, through a few scripts, didn't they? Yeah. And... Well, that was the first script was it was going to take place on Earth. Well, that was pre-script even. The idea was that Alien 3, the rest of the trilogy, the aliens were going to get loose on Earth and it was going to be like just madness and yes, craziness. Yes, 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 yes. Um, then, it, then Alien 3 became something really fucking bizarre and distinct. And amongst other ideas they had, it was going to take place on a wooden monastery floating in the middle of space. I heard that as well. Yeah, which... When you think about what Alien 3 finally turned into, it's just like... You can not, see that the, the genesis of that idea. Yeah, there's still, yeah, it's just still elements. It, it just turned into, like, Lip Ripley with a bunch of male prisoners, <laughs> in, including Phil Daniels, of all people. And uh, Paul McGann, the oh, yeah. uh, Eighth Doctor, who played Gorick. And a number of other, ooh, what was he in actors. Yeah, yeah, the, a lot of those faces. Um, there is, like, Alien 3, judging it against the rest of the series, I don't think is a great movie. J- judging it, like... F- there are some good moments in it, though. Like, I don't know. Like, it's not. Oh, yeah, great. the little girl's dead yeah. as well. Yeah. So much for all that work you put into the saving her. All that effort, let's just undo it. Um, negative capability. Ah, oh, poor Bishop. How euphemistic. Um, and. And, yes, so here we yeah, are. Yeah, no, yeah. But, so here we are. Ripley's crash landed. She's the only survivor from all the survivors from Aliens. All that struggle was pointless. Boo hoo. <laughs> Everything was pointless. This is a side quest. And they brought Alien with them on with the shuttle, and it's going to fuck shit up. Yeah, so there were two um, face huggers on the shuttle. One of them got onto Ripley, and she has a, a queen nestled inside yes. of her. And of course, Wayland Yutani are going to come and claim the aliens so they can profit them from them somehow. Because Wayland Yutani <laughs> are right up there with the Umbrella Corporation. <laughs> Started uh, started as the Umbrella Corporation, I think. There was a bunch of mergers. Yeah, basically. It's complicated that, yeah. that uh, you know, owners and co-owners. And... All right, now this wasn't my original choice of game. Well, so... that was a bit of a story jump, wasn't it? Crash landed on the facility, and then bam, shit's, shit's fucked. Yeah. Hunt will be hunted, pressure point. All right, so oh, I have to select so there's missions. Op- yeah. Are there optional missions? I'm quite reminded of Metroid by this game so far, intro-wise. Yeah. Imagine Metroid, but where all the fun's been drained out. Oh, so it's like, sort of, it is sort of Metroidvania y. Yeah, there is. Place. It's. You select missions, you have different goals, um, so, you know. That's quite I mean, ahead of its time, isn't it? Yeah. 
uh, the execution leaves a lot to be desired. The this game, game plays very this sluggishly. This game's just looking great so far. <laughs> I can't imagine how it could get worse from here. Okay, so I gotta get down to cell block three and cell yeah, block Yeah, let's get four. down and rescue them all. That exclamation mark has totally pumped me up. Come on, let's do it. Let's kick ass. When you're ready. Okay. When you're ready. Alien corridor. I need to find how to get to cell block three and four. Medic oh. bay. Well, now it's... Minor, now it's cell get block four. All right, there's cell block four. Well, now right. it's getting kind of dry. Ball. Big wash, some eggs. Bug wash? Curious. Okay, prisoner. Prisoner yeah. and cell block four. All right, well, there's cell block four, so where the fuck's cell block three? All right, maybe it's, maybe it's in cell block four. We'll get down there and have a look. So maybe, that's where I am maybe now. Maybe cell block four is connected to cell block three. And, okay, that appears to have a... Do you suppose that's an impassable? No, it can't be an impassable wall. All right, so okay, get out, go down the... Let's see go. how we do. Let's go on, let's do. Let's, let's, let's get to the action. Please wait for no reason at all. I'm <laughs> not logging off. Well, it's good that they set up her network password in the time since she arrived. Okay, this is bullshit so far, because there was only one alien in Alien 3. That's why it was called Alien, alien rather yeah. than Aliens 3. Oh, aliens 2. Away. Um, yeah, so now there are a fucking shitload of them. Uh, I remember it was, it was trying to breed, wasn't it? Because that's what they do. Try to breed. Yeah, this, uh... Much like a lot of things, takes um, some liberties with the... Yeah. Liberties with the uh, source material. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to see what, um... This must be quite a low-gravity world from the way you're jumping uh, sluggishly. You jerk. No All acid right, blood sprays, then. Uh... I think that does come into it at some point. Because that was a big mechanic in the Aliens vs. Predator games. And, uh, Colonial Marines, of course. Couldn't kill things too close to them, because yeah, okay. you might lose a single oh, point of health. Because no tough colonial marine's gonna be slowed by, like, acid that burns through metal. <laughs> They're fine. Ah, oh, saved a guy, check it out. Alright. I'm sure he'll be fine. Yeah, he's, he'll be, he's safe. Yeah, you're good, right? You can just flash teleport away. I yep, suppose I just is, collected some shit. This is looking fairly bog standard platform movie tie in. Yeah, I mean, it. Shoot the things and jump on stuff. Yeah, it's it's not a very platformer was basically the default state for tie-in game back in the day. Yeah, before first-person shooters roamed the earth. Home improvement Home had a improvement. platformer. <laughs> I can't shoot down while I'm in the air. Why are you always so shit at arcade games? Every single time you brought one, you just walk into every single hazard. Watching, oh no, it's like watching Ghostbusters back was a chore. Well, mostly because uh, the aim is to try and get through as much as I can as quick as I can, and I always figure that just tanking damage. Well, you're not gonna finish it. We realise that. Well, you know now. But you know, no, I, I wanted to know. try and see as well, much of the game as possible. So. Well, fuck that. How about this time you just show off your absolute gameplay skills? Yeah, all right. This'll be fun, viewer. <laughs> you know what? If, if you're gonna make fun of me for this, next like the, the ne next pick I'm doing is just gonna be fighting games I'm really good at. I, I've in the past told you to do that, because really? I've watched you play fighting games you're really good at, and I find it incredibly boring to watch. Alright, It's sweet. just That's... smack, 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 combo, 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 oh, you won again. Move I'm on. I'm gonna do a series of fighting games. Of shitty, shitty fight. Oh, you can get health back. Oh, that's great. Right, why, cool. why not? Show everyone the games you are actually good at. Oh, those are clips. Okay, cool. What, like, uh, YouTube? Yeah, YouTube clips. I have collected nine YouTube clips. Um, nice. Yeah, if I collect more, I get uh, uh, the ability to comment faggot under all of them. Is there a mission for upping your subscriber base? Yeah, uh... Ooh, I can shoot from the ladders! Nice. Um, desperately cloying for subscribes and likes. Hey, fuck you. Okay then, let's talk about something completely other than the game. Okay, How so I can make week? amazing space jumps. How was your week? Um, okay, well I, for my movie, I watched uh, Jodorowsky's Dune. Which, um, Okay then. Well, that's, you know, that was my week. I, I, I go to uni, my week's not Must interesting. Must be a bloody long film. <laughs> um, Jodorowsky's Dune would have been a bloody long film. <laughs> so, how is how does that differentiate from David Lynch's Dune? 
Well, it's interesting because both of them are very much films of the director and not so much the source material. That's good. That's auteurism. Yeah, and I mean, if uh, I will say, the people who don't like the changes that David Lynch made, you would have absolutely hated Jodorowsky's Dune. The whole point of adaptation is to add your own spin to the to the uh, property. Okay, do you want to hear how Jodorowsky phrased that senten- um, sentiment? Go on. Okay, well, he was talking about how he was going to rape Frank Herbert. Rape him, rape him, rape him. And then he giggles and says, with love, of course. I can see why he got on well with H.R. Geiger. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, of course, too. H.R. Geiger was on board for that project, wasn't he? Yeah, well, it was interesting. The idea was that Jodorowsky was going to get different artists and different musicians to do the themes and compositions and um, ships yeah. and whatnot for the different uh, families. H.R. So, Geiger is rape-tastic, as yeah, artists go. Geiger was going to be the Harkonnen, which, I mean, come on, just fits perfectly. And his designs were damn good, and the whole thing was creepy. He was a—he's a scary look. He was a scary looking dude. Presumably, he's even more scary now. He's a corpse. But, yeah. Uh, Fucking where did all these come from? You little buggers. Uh, you know, I'm willing to bet that once the embalmer was through with him, he was looking better than he had in years. King. Uh, okay, rest in but... peace, HR. <laughs> H.R. Uh, Geiger. I wonder if there's fall damage. You, oh, did, okay. you did that thing again where you just say a thing in a funny voice. Uh, it was a reference to... Have you ever seen the old um, British TV show H.R. Puff and stuff? I think it was oh, British. Are you making this joke again? Well, that show was creepy. Okay, but uh, getting back to Dune. Um, Jodorowsky, yeah. So, the idea was there was a, um, a British uh, sci-fi novel... Uh, cover art doer. You could probably phrase that better than I did. A cover art doer? doer yeah. Do you cover mean a artist. cover artist? <laughs> I've donated platelets again today. Give me some, some, some slack. It's always blood or booty calls with you. That is going to be blood or booty calls, the Gabriel Morton story. Don't tangent. Um, Alright, I think I've... Do you think I've saved all the dudes here? Because I think I've... I can't find any more. Oh, fine. Let's just tangent our balls off. Whatever. Yes, I think you saved everyone. Well, no, I'm just trying to... I'm trying to do the game. You're yelling at me to do the fucking game. You're yelling at me to take a, tell a fucking story. Well, it you're the one who space. asked me if you'd done all the dudes yet. <laughs> when you were supposed to be talking about Dune. Um, yeah. So, he... Had, like... What was it? Um... Oh, okay. I gotta push up in front of the doors. Alright. Yep, that's pretty standard. Well, yeah, but side doors. Not to standard. Yeah. Is it, Ooh, wait, why did you go back in? Um, because I thought I couldn't get out the right door at the bottom here because I didn't push up near it. All right. I thought it might have just been a locked door. Okay. And this, oh, yep, there we go. It's probably hopefully cell block three. Awesome. Ah. Anyway, about that dune. Um. Yeah. So he had Geiger to do. Um, the yeah, Harkonnen. Awesome. Yeah. The cast he had was fucking insane. Like he, like he was always in his own movies. So he himself was gonna be uh, Leto. His son was gonna be Paul. Leto and- Atreides, yeah. the father of the hero, Paul Atreides. Yeah, his See, son. I, I know my Dune. Yeah, Dune's good. Dune's good. You should read it. Um, his son I tried, was gonna be. I started be- reading Dune. I never got through it. Sorry. Continue. Oh no, that's fine. Like it's a, it's a sci-fi epic. Like it's where we get space opera. Well, yes. From, so I can understand it. I remember thinking everyone's. when I was watching David Lynch's Dune, this really looks like they cut the shit out of what, what the act of the story. Um, they yeah. were jumping ahead like crazy towards the end. They cut out a lot of stuff. Um, and once he decided his son was going to be uh, Paul, he said, okay, well, you've got to be like Paul then, and had him fucking training with some lunatic French martial artist in, like, swords and combat and shit, like, six hours a day, every day, for six months. Method acting? That's his kid. That's not method acting. That's just, like, you have to be Paul Atreides now. Well, how old (laughs) was the kid? Um, I think, like, 13 or 14. I can't remember exactly. Okay, that's kind of fucked. Yeah. No. Jodorowsky's a bit fucking mental. Yeah, that, that's how you're making it sound. <laughs> no, like, oh, so you're not familiar with... Uh, how familiar are you with Jodorowsky's work? Uh, until you came in here today, I don't think I'd ever heard the word, the name Jodorowsky. Okay. Expand. All right, so you're going to want to, like... If you haven't, Google or Wikipedia Jodorowsky and at least watch the trailers for El Topo and... Oh, Christ, what's that Messiah movie he made? He was... Okay, you know every really terrible student film that's all avant-garde and strange... He's why those yes, exist. Yes, I know all of them. Yeah, you do. He's why those exist. Okay. So basically, he was the sort but, of oh, patient... Oh, did, did he direct The Seventh Seal or something? Um... Because that's what I think of when I think of moody student films. Which he, one's... 
Being Seven Seal that is that black and white film where the where the Templar Knight plays chess with death. Um, no. He he was kind of like the other side of goofy student crap, like the really wacky messianic sort of insane visuals, like really good visuals to his credit, like the fucking sort of amazing shit to watch. All right, I can't go through that. Films a visual medium. Yeah. Um, well, he started out in Mexico doing, um, I think Mexico, doing uh, theater. And so he did all the Brechtian plays and all the sort of avant-garde stuff there. So he just, he wasn't really a, a filmmaker to begin with. He just took this th theatrical sense of visual style to movies. Mm. Um, Walking like that must really hurt. Yeah, it's good for the glutes. I'll bet. Huh. Why did you die? I didn't. That's just the you've been injured in the fucking vent animation. Okay. Yeah. Fucking... Boring game. Oh! Um... Yes? Where were you? Yeah, and then so he had Salvador Dali to play the Emperor. That's pretty wacky. Yeah. Was he, was he getting artists for all the roles? Um, yeah, Mick Jagger was gonna be Fade. So the casting of Sting as Fade isn't that sort of weird yeah, when you think about uh, it. Yeah, that suddenly makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Mick Jagger was Fade. Um, and... Who do you think he cast as the Baron? Just, just crapshoot. Someone who could look who looked like and play the Baron. Ricky Tomlinson. Nope. British people will get that. I don't. Uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, Rod Rodney Dangerfield. Ooh, very good choice, but no. Okay. That actually is good, though. That would have been brilliant. Well, I just I just said that him because the guy who played Baron Harkonnen in the David Lynch film reminded me of uh, Rodney Dangerfield. Yeah, he did a bit. Like if Rodney Dangerfield was a creepy, despotic pedophile. Who did play Baron Harkonnen? Um, I can't remember his name, but that face is etched into my mind. <laughs> uh, I seem to think he's someone I know, but I forget who. Yeah, it's altogether possible. We gotta look it up on the look it up. Yeah, let's let's consult the Oracle. All right, then who who did was uh, Mr. S whatever stupid name it was, Eroski wanted to be playing the Baron Harkonnen. Orson Welles. Nice. Yeah. And like, this is Orson Welles at his absolute fattest. And you know how he got him to, to sign on for this? And bear in mind, he had all these people ready. Like, they had agreed to do it. He gave him a birthday cake. Um, close. He found... Um, he found him at one of France's, like, premier, um, gourmand restaurants. And... Bought him a cake. Yeah, like said, if you do this film, I will hire the chef of this restaurant to come and cook for you all of your meals. See, that's the sort of thing that would motivate someone who no longer needed to work ever again, wouldn't you? you that's, have yeah. to think so that's... of creative gifts rather than just money. Alright, I can't seem to kill that while it's closed. There we go. Yeah, that sounds like not all, not only a uh, ambitious project, also quite an expensive one. Yeah, I With mean, bear in of... mind too, this was in, this was before Star Wars. I mean, what, the way you're making it sound, it kind of seems like they're uh, bringing together a whole bunch of massive egos, and that sounds like that would doom the project in itself. The sad thing is, because Jodorowsky himself was a died-in-the-wall cult leader ego, he had all these people, like, he had them... What? You missed. Oh, how... Okay, so here's jump, and your jump, um... And prophetically, you fell into the lava. Yeah, your jump fucking momentum doesn't... Just changes when you try to do, like, jump changes in midair, so this, the momentum carries over, you just turn yes. with the same speed. That is how science works. Yeah. Um... Baron Harkonnen was played by Kenneth McLith McMillan, by the way. Yeah. Mm, that name does not ring a bell for me. I'm gonna find out what else he was in. He was in Amadeus. Yeah. He was in Magnum P.I. <laughs> I would not have expected that. Seems like he was mostly a TV actor. Huh. Yeah, I was wrong. I don't think I know this guy. Um, Alright. Um, but yeah, Jodorowsky was the fucking crazy glue that held this wacky train together, and... Yes, I uh, imagine you'd need to have great uh, organizational skills. Well, again, do... You know, El Topo is... Did he hold it together? I thought it got cancelled. Well, that's projects. the thing. He held it together. I, was, I thought it got just, you know, sort of, this is stupid, and ditched as well. But he held it together enough that the whole thing was on track. All they needed was money. All they needed was one um, studio to go, yeah, sure, and sign on for it. Obviously, that didn't happen, because... <laughs> Jodorowsky was terrifying to, like, studios, because he was fucking insane, like, and the movies he made were demented. Well, you have to take that. Take yeah. a certain amount of that when you're dealing with a, a really creative artist. But the, sort uh, of goes with the territory. Yeah. The idea stuck, 
And um, De Palma got a hold of it and gave it to Lynch. And that's what we get David Lynch's Dune. And, so, um, so it wasn't even filmed then? Oh, no, no, this thing never got filmed. Oh, well. What might have been. Yeah, um, the... The art and the sort of costume direction and stuff, though, it's all, you know, it's really interesting to have a look at. Um, if you're interested at all, I recommend having a, a peek at it. Okay, so the, the the documentary, it's a recommendation from you, then. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting documentary. And um, Okay, then. Then the guy that did some of the writing for it and some was going to do the special effects for it, who I think did special effects for uh, um, Darkstar... Mm. He went on to write Alien and got Geiger on board. So oh, was that Dan O'Bannon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they met on this project, and the special effects team that Jodorowsky had organized to do Dune wound up being most of what did um, huh. fucking Alien. So well, it makes you wonder how much of cultural history we owe to all the, diff- all the different things. So much, like so much of everything. Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean... Through. I don't think we. I asked you. That, I don't think I asked you this on a video, but uh, I remember asking you recently. How much of modern culture do you think we owe to ET for the Atari Twenty Six Hundred crashing the Western games industry? Because if they hadn't done that, Nintendo wouldn't have gotten a, a foothold. Uh, maybe our generation wouldn't have raised with wouldn't have been raised with a growing awareness and interest in Japanese culture. Maybe there wouldn't have been such an anime boom. It will all be kids dressing up and acting Spanish for some reason. And. And behold my excellent linking skills, because the film I watched this week was Akira, popularly considered one of the greatest anime films of all time. I'd argue with that. Well, I mean... Well, that's why I said popularly considered. Yeah. Yes, it was quite fun. Have you read the uh, massive... I've read uh, the first five telephone directory volumes, but from what I've seen, the film sort of seems to deviate or summarise the plot quite extensively. It is a dauntingly large work. It really is. I mean, there's a whole bit where, you know... Why are they not killing those things? Die! The whole bit where Tetsuo (laughs) takes over the city and becomes a cult leader, and where he's, like, hanging out with Akira the little boy, rather than Akira the glass jars. I need to find the medical wing and get myself some health. So I sort of liked what they were doing, but there's one thing that sort of pisses me off about Japanese animation in general, is that it always seems to break down to god particle bullshit by the end. It does that a bit. Yeah. I mean, um, that happens with JRPGs as well. Always ends with murdering God, doesn't it? <laughs> Quick, Jesus is coming. Get him! It's like you can't think of any other way to make things dramatic. But I didn't want to Can't think of this. any other way to raise the stakes. Okay. But a very impressive animation, yes. Um, yeah, yeah. And that was 89, wasn't it? Yeah, it was from that whole uh, period in Japan's history where they're having a bit of a... They have uh, one little economic crisis and they panic like it's going to be fucking Thunderdome. Oh, like the West doesn't. <laughs> but it's interesting. It was like set 30 years after a major disaster and coincidentally was made roughly 30 years or 40 years after Japan was nuked. So, uh. All right, so I've got all the exactly, dudes in Cell Block 4. That's wasn't good. it exactly subtle with its ripped from today's headlines attitude? <laughs> Alright, okay. There's some health there. Yeah, so... Uh, um, I'll go up there. Actually, one thing around. I admired about Akira, the film, is that how it... How it uh, the, the sheer complexity of all the characters in it. I mean, there's none. There's no one you could really position as a straight villain in that. You, see, you can see where they all came from. You can, you can see their, all their roots. A I valid think, reason, yeah. Like, Yeah. I mean, even... Even things that you might not personally agree with, but you can understand how that individual has reached that conclusion based on their life experiences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was pretty well done. Everyone was pretty well established. Pretty well, yes. Uh, how do I... Can I go forward? Am I allowed to... All right. Uh, getting off ladders. <coughs> Almost as hard as it is in games with the Quake engine. I'm running low on everything. This shit's getting scary now. So, uh, do you have lives? I don't know. What happens when you're game over? No clue. Okay, this will be fun. Yeah. I cannot uh, remember. Oh, yes, the funny thing happened this week, actually. Oh! Well, you know, I've been having trouble with my computer. Um, oh, health, that'll help. Yeah, that's why I've been, I'm on the hunt for it now. I was getting some, like, blue screens and lockups and stuff. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes. Well, well mm. this week it happened again, so I finally decided to crack the case open and see if there's anything going wrong in there, because 
I PC tried... Master Race, PC Master Race. Because I tried doing a system. Oh, actually, Jesus. I tried doing a system restore and didn't seem to help, so I was pretty sure it was a hardware issue. All right. So I opened up the case and looked around, and do you know what I found? Do you know what those dozy buggers who put my computer together <laughs> did? Okay, get ready for the I told you so comments, YouTubers. <laughs> what? They plugged the fucking P15 and P14 cords into the video card with a GeForce GTX 690. <laughs> I laughed so hard, I was sick. Reference. Okay, so, so what does that mean? What is so obviously, I yeah. unplugged the P14 and plugged the P17 in, and it's been fine ever since. Assembly hall. Wake me. up, Alienware. That's right, I can go through doors in the fucking thing. Weapons room. All right, I don't want to... Now, the truth is, I Google searched the problem, and that's what it said to do. <laughs> You but, but you know, I, I was really proud of myself for fixing it with my own two hands. Um, it is satisfying. Like, yeah, it's like it when is. I fix my washing machine. And that's why I like um, how, you know, how... Um, it's like how you can do that with a PC as opposed to a console. Yeah, well that, I mean, how you can just Google it. You can put, you can just yeah. copy-paste the, the problem and Google goes, oh yeah, here you go, buddy. Well, if you, in fairness, if you enter a phrase like blue screens, lockups, and crashes help yeah, on Google, there will be quite a number of reasons for that. It can be a little bit of a... But, I mean, no, when the, when the thing spits hey, out a specific... Who was that guy? Uh, oh, that's just Dave. <laughs> that's just Dave? Yeah, he is. Hi, Dave. Yeah. Hi, Ripley. You know, he's the guy in the movie who just sits there and says, I am a murderer and rapist of women. You're going to help against the aliens then? No, I'll just watch no. you. I'm sure <laughs> I just mess, he's messed it up. They haven't made it over to our side yet. Yeah. It's pretty good over here. Yeah. Hey, uh, Terry and me thinking of renting a film later. You want to come over? Oh, hey, yeah, there there's he Terry. Again. That's Terry there, yes. <laughs> it's just... What are we going to put in the background art? I don't know, a bunch of dudes just checking the shit out. And there's Fat Bob. <laughs> fat Bob. We all eat the same gruel, Bob. How the hell do you get fat? Yes. So, uh, this week I watched Akira and fixed my PC. Good week. That's a very... That's a very modern nerd culture week. Basically. I watched Akira and I fixed a computer. Yeah. Mm. So it's funny, you know, all the Japanese animations I like are just the ones that are the ones that don't do the usual things Japanese animation do. Yeah, I'm well and truly like, like oh, well, you know... They're inexplicably bouncing tits, are catering to fetishes for no reason whatsoever. Huge numbers of uh, harem style women. Ev everyone has the same face but a different haircut. Ah, uh, fucking. Oh, and uh, lots of uh, implied rape. <laughs> oh, why stop it implied? Well, well, I guess there was a bit of that in Akira when the nasty gang tore the, tore the girl's shirt off. But it yeah. didn't go any further with Am that. Am I in cell block 3 now? I think I'm in corridor 2 or something. Oh, I can jump across there, that's why. Hey, flamethrower. Oh, that's one of my major censorship arguments, uh, is Japan. Where I say, have you played some of them Japanese video games where you literally play as a rapist and uh, you get points by raping women? Yeah. And then have you also noticed that Japan has one of the lowest sex crime rates in the world? Not that I'm implying correlation implies causation or anything, but you have to admit it opens a debate. Uh, fucking respawning, die! Look at that, it's just like the respawn point's there, so it's like, here comes another one! Yeah. Fucking You'd just... be terrible playing a Castlevania game, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, oh. Castlevania doesn't have ammo. Oh, you got some pretty good strength in those spindly stick arms of yours. Spider Ripley, Spider Ripley. But most of you must weigh less than a crisp. Ripley always had a good sense of that, like, or a good, like, sort of... Oh... Fucking dicks. Well, she's got some powerful legs if she can tank a landing like that. Yeah. Ripley had that kind of wiry strength, you maybe know, not she, like yeah. power, but like maybe she's already, fight to the death strength. Maybe she's already got that alien DNA in her from Alien <laughs> Resurrection. From Alien Resurrection. I didn't mind Alien Resurrection because by that stage I just lowered the bar. I can I was... forgive it for a lot because I like Jean-Pierre Genet. Yeah, like as a, as a sort of weird off to the side alien kind of what if. I, I like that I they hired... Enjoy. I like that they hired Jean-Pierre Genet to do a mainstream film and he brought in all the same all actors. His weirdos, all yeah. his weird freak show, like, bro. Come French, to me, my menagerie. All his freak show French actors to come into it as well. And Ron Perlman. <laughs> Always Ron Perlman. You have to have Perlman. And this may surprise you if you've seen City of Lost Children, but Ron Perlman doesn't speak a word of French. He learned all his lines in that Phonetic film phonetically. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, because apparently... Fuck off! I was shooting you with fire! 
Apparently, but yes, before you uh, divulge into commentary that goes nowhere. This isn't commentary, this is me having a legitimate emotion at the game. Well, that's my point. What was the sentence, what was the end of the sentence that commenced Ron Perlman? That um, you were saying? I honestly, no, no recollection. Never mind then. Ron Perlman was there. Yeah, I read a thing about how his phonetic French was remarkably good. Which is interesting because the French are really fucking testy about pronunciation. Well, not really. I mean, if you're a visitor to France, um, there's, you know, they have a reputation for being snobby. But uh, as long as you just show that you put the effort yeah. in, they're fine. I mean, if you just if you just go there and say, "Do you speak English?" they they treat they you like pissy. scum. But if you go there and say, um, "Je suis désolé, uh, je suis anglais, uh, parlez-vous parlez parlez anglais?" they will say, "Yeah, whatever." Um, just I don't, yeah, to, so just I'm taking talk, it from the personal experience of a French friend trying to teach me French pronunciation. And and just, talk, was... just talk to you in English, right? The essence of French pronunciation is uh, coughing up phlegm every time you pronounce an R. Yeah. Uh, the friend of mine said, try to imagine I've got a carrot in my throat. Gay Paris, where I buy lingerie. Which didn't help. I was trying to say carot or carot. Carot. Yeah. I, it's embarrassing, like me trying to pronounce French is just terrible. Ah, oh, I think I've saved the last dude. I achieved! Also, any word that ends with ER, pronounce air. Air. Yes. Okay, there you go. And, Look. Any, and any word that ends with T-I-O-N, pronounce Chion. We're learning. Is in Redemption. You should make one of those uh, YouTube things where you get your tits out and talk about language. Uh, I could do, give you a Blackadder quote. Great! On le contrary, I hate your English pigs! You have this great misconception that Frenchmen are great love hairs. I'm French, and I'm unlike a baby carrot and two small petit pois. <laughs> that was uh, a role played by Chris Barry, who later played Rimmer in Rimmer. Red Dwarf. Ah, I'm going to have to go back and look at that. Because beyond British Empire and Red Dwarf, I don't know much else of Chris was, Barry's work. That was one episode of the uh, third series of Blackadder. Chris Barry uh, was uh, the butler in the Tomb Raider films. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right, I forgot about that. This tiny sliver of health is carrying you quite a while. Oh, spoke too soon. You jinxed me, you bastard. That was hardly my fault. It was you your walked, fault. You walked straight into a hazard like you always do. I couldn't see it behind the pole. Yeah, yeah. But I just blame the pole. If it's not platelets, it's pole with you, isn't Polets. it? Polets! Anyway. Alright. I appear to have died. Yeah, well done you. Interestingly, there were actually some gaming news this week we could talk about. Amazing, I know. Fuck a doodle do. Well, why don't we start with the uh, bombshell? Right. <laughs> the uh, 3D Realms of Duke Nukem Forever open quotes fame close quotes release a new trailer for a new game they're making called Bombshell. Being, uh, they're developing with Interceptor, the developers of the Rise of the Triad remake, which had its problems, but I remember having fun with. Yeah. Oh. So I presume they're making like a new action game in the vein in the vein of Duke 3D or Rise of the Triad. What what were what were your feelings on the the announcement trailer that we just watched, Gabriel? Well, yeah, Yahtzee was like, "Have you seen the Bombshell trailer?" When we were walking and talking about the news this week, and I was like, "Of all the trailers that came out, or of all those sort of release things that came out, why would you mention Bombshell?" No, I haven't why seen the Bombshell trailer. Why indeed? Yeah, so I'm thinking, "Ooh, could this be interesting? Could this be good?" Because we're getting to see some, you know, 3D realms busting out some original material. Wow, ha, that could ha, be. Ha, ha, no. Yeah, and then you sit and watch this meaningless piece of shit. Of a fucking... Like, why? Why? The trailer what is, did that do? The essence of the trailer is basically, we made a character model. Here it is. Yeah. Here it is riding a stationary motorbike while a visual <laughs> effects company experiments in the background. And not even good experiments. It's just like, oh, look, that's explosion number three on repeat. You can see where it clipped into each other. Like, it was so... And the character design, it just reminds me of a character designed by someone doing a game design degree yeah. to show that they're actually doing some work. A 15-year-old who just watched Tank Girl. Yeah, the first piece of concept art. It was, it's like a lady in a bikini top with a punk hairstyle with a cyborg arm. <laughs> oh, oh. she it, looked like she was done taking shit too. It was just, we have gone nowhere, 3D Realms, have <laughs> we? <laughs> well, they've regressed. If, yeah, <laughs> if it were that were possible. 
Yeah, there it is. The, the impossible has happened. 3D Realms have regressed. It was... And it's about, you know, monsters invade and this lady has to kill them all. I it guess. was so... Had to shoot them with a shotgun. Yeah. As she did the The shotgun camera. was a terrible... It was so uniquely terrible in, in every possible way. It, uh, it just... I don't think we can do it justice. Just yeah, pause it, the video and watch it if you, you really can't. Yeah. It's... Because everything was a shitty, a shitty, shitty cliche. Like, if every idea was a horrible cliche, yeah. and the execution was uh, 1990s-ish... Uh, you know, I think that's uh, not giving the 90s any credit at all. Yeah, you know, I actually take that back. Fucking normality had some bitchin' cutscenes. <laughs> yes. Abysmal. And again... I mean, You're making a trailer. What's the trailer going to do? It's going to introduce to character. Oh, nope. Don't... Is it going to introduce to gameplay? Nope. Graphics? No, I hope. I well, hope that's not what they're trying to fucking well, sell this say game it, on. Say it doesn't introduce character, but I have a feeling it told us everything we need to know about this great character they've come up with. Uh, uh... Yeah, I did like how they were going for the the shatter glass take, where the where a person gets angry and then you can see their hand clench and then the glass they're holding shatters, but they didn't even make the glass shatter. It just cracked a bit, and then she stopped, as if to go, oops, that's an ex that's expensive, that's expensive table yeah, that is. Better it's not, not just expensive cable wing, that's Better not wear. go too far with my emotions. People might accuse me of being a stereotypical female character. <laughs> Alright, now the exciting game, how do I fix that? Yes, that looked uh, very obvious, didn't it? Have you tried press? Oh, oh, there, we oh go. there you go. Well guessed. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that. Yes, we'll just weld that in place with our teeth. Yeah. The uh, next mission, I cut some fucking concrete. Nice. So, yeah. This is the Australian government's new thing you have to do for six months before you get your welfare. Oh, that's lovely Australian government. <laughs> Still, it's nice to have a common enemy, isn't it? It's... I think the whole country's going to come together. I have friends who try to be extremely moderate to the point of supporting, like, the LMP in matters that I think are really kind of foolish. And... Even they're like, I don't understand this. Like, these are people who are sort of like the business first, tax stuff, and the the budget has seemed to just almost deliberately, like, you can't imagine how this was... It's a it's a budget of cruelty and no lack of compassion. Yeah, and that's it's for a... people like us who have compassion. For the people who don't even have compassion, it doesn't actually really save any money. Like, that's the insane thing. Yes. Like, none of this is really for, for yes. anything. It was, it was designed to fix uh, an economic crisis that does not exist. exist. Yes. And... So even my, like, Australia weird economics of, friends are like, this was sort of pointless, we don't... In a world of, of wide global financial crisis, Australia is one of the strongest economies on Earth right now. Yeah, literally, literally got through that whole crisis unscathed, mostly. Yeah. I mean, there were signs that it was tailing off, and that was, like, allegedly the cause of this whole austerity budget, but it's nowhere near, like, Greece levels. No. Well, it's, it's, just, it's like how absurd. Ireland every, like, 20 years has a mass exodus and they're having another one and it's like, this has never it's, happened in Australia. It's hard not to see this government as just a government that wants to fuck with people, like in Transmetropolitan. Yeah, and again, to a degree that offends and annoys a lot of its yeah, traditional base. Like, a lot of people who would normally vote for LMP over Labour, like, if you came down to, like, one or one or the other. I mean, they've gone against all their election promises. Yeah. I mean, you can't just do that. Well, they're trying, which is interesting. I mean, that's... I mean, that's why they got elected. They got elected <laughs> on the promise that they were going to do A, A, B, and C. If they go and do the exact opposite, well, there should be international tribunals for that They haven't kind just of done thing. the exact opposite. They've invented new letters to do. It's, yeah. been, it's been a fascinating just... Again, like, I was expecting the LMP to do things I didn't like because I have compassion and an understanding of how yes. to motivate people outside of just the use of fear. And they're right wing. Yeah. Well, not just, it's not that. Like, they, you know, it's particularly the things like the welfare stuff, where it's like, well, we're, gonna, we're just going to make sure you don't get welfare for the first six months of being unemployed until you get to a certain age. Yeah, and the idea just is stop to, lazing about and get a job. Yeah, What's that's meant to motivate. And the problem is, you know, A, the welfare, you know, welfare is not a huge whole period. And B, it doesn't, that, that doesn't motivate. That's just using a stick to beat somebody who's probably already beaten down. Like, yes. and all that does is get people to break. And yep. that, a broken person is, just needs fixing then. It doesn't turn a human into a useful fucking utility. It just breaks them. Well, I think we've, we've, uh, I think we're both pretty cross about it, and that's why we've gone on such a huge tangent. Yeah, and I'm getting into teaching, so I loathe Christopher, Christopher Pine. It's a horrible little thing. But let's, uh... Critter, I think, is a good term for him. Well, there's plenty of more qualified people than us to discuss it, so let's go back to those silly video games we like so much. 
You know, uh, speaking of which, didn't the government like shut down the, the video game part as well? Well, let's not get into that. <laughs> Well, they were shutting down government funding for, for everything uh, for, for video game. For, Del- like, yeah, video gov- game basically government stimulus for the gaming industry. Yeah. Also, the film industry as well. So we shouldn't just so we shouldn't feel. Uh, I don't think anyone should feel solely targeted in this budget. Frankly, no, it was a buckshot budget. Yeah, but anyway, <coughs> getting back Fuck to you. Back, getting back to bombshell. If it is just a cock out, if you'll excuse the the expression, shooter, then that's exactly the kind of game I like. But. Uh, I honestly, I exactly think they're going to go more the realm of um, Borderlands than they are just shooter. Oh god, I hope not. Because that's that's popular, Yahtzee. Well, Borderlands is a shooter, but it's such a boring shooter. It is one of those things... It's designed, it's really designed for co-op gameplay, so if you play a single player, it's just boring as hell. It's just um, killing a million different Jason Voorheeses in a million different scrapyards. This gun has two greens, must pick it up. Oh, this gun has one green and one red. What do I do? Choices. Not a fan, frankly. I... I played through the first one by myself. Yeah, me too, um, actually. I didn't hate it because while I prefer things like, you know, Fallout and whatnot, it didn't pretend to be that. It was just like, here's a dumb game for fun. So I was like, okay. The second one does that thing where it ramps up the pop culture references to, like, obnoxious. Yeah, yeah, that was annoying. And I hate the, uh, you know, I, I like a nice pure shooter. Painkiller is one of my most favorite games of all time. Yeah, cool. But that keeps coming up on Steam for cheap. I must have a look at it next time or two. You haven't played it? Um, no. I have a feeling you'd like it. It's a very pure shooter, but it, uh, it, it sort of elevates the pure shooter without getting in the way of pure shooter goodness. So yeah. it's got really good environments and uh, really great monster design. But uh, it's got fast-paced action uninterrupted by such bollocks as... RPG elements, and, <laughs> and that's that's what I didn't like about Borderlands. Always having every time you pick up a new gun, or every time you kill a bunch of guys, having to loot everything in the room like a burglar who's, who's obsessive compulsive, and yeah. checking to make sure the gun you're using isn't fr- fractionally worse than the gun you just picked up. Oh, I can't stand it. Okay, I mean, so in its in its pipe. place, in an RPG like Dark Souls, that's fine. But you know, in a shooter, I want to have my cock out and my pace up. Frankly, so yeah, if Bombshell was something like that, that would be something I would enjoy. But this trailer is the kind that does the opposite of filling one with hope. <laughs> um, it's just, I don't think the trailer can fill anyone with anything. Like, well, no. I don't think there's any there's any emotion to be had there. I don't. It's the essence of pre-rendered trailer bollocks. Doesn't yeah. tell you shit about the game, and all it does is to tell you that the the concept exists. All right, so it's nothing to go on whatsoever, like all pre-rendered trailers, but even more so than usual. Didn't it even say like gameplay footage? Well, I wouldn't say it was it was as bad a case as the Dead Island pre-rendered trailer, because you know at least it doesn't seem to be a complete. I assume it doesn't seem to be a completely different tone to what yeah. the eventual game <laughs> <I> will <know>. be. <laughs> that was such a good trailer. I was like, wow, what an amazing tone. Yes. Uh, Not exactly uh, the sort of thing you can extract gameplay from, though, is it? No, uh, but I mean. I think a non-gameplay trailer can and should be an indicator of tone. Like, I think that's well, an yes. acceptable thing to do. Like, if you're well, going to yes. use a non-gameplay trailer for your game, that should indicate, uh, is it wacky well, and first, fun? Is well, it, first you know? of all, fuck you. Uh, but second of all, yeah, if you must. Well, yeah, I, I'm not saying, time. like, that's the ideal choice, but... I mean, surely a trailer a trailer is a communication. If you're going to communicate something, yeah. you know, that's what a trailer can oh, communicate. Oh, E3's coming up soon, I'm sure this Whee! will come up a lot. Uh, yeah, you three. What are your predictions, Cheese? I try not to predict, because <laughs> then you can't be disappointed. No sadness where Yahtzee is going. I guess all the usual suspects are going to come out. I guess there's going to be the official announcement of the Kinect thing. And that was our other topic. Uh, the, the Xbox has finally relented and agreed to release a version of the Xbox, the X-Bone, without the Kinect pack-in and for $100 less. So how much is that going to be local? Hmm? How much money is that going to be local? Local price? I don't know. Presum- I think it brings it down to around the same cost as the PS4, so presumably around that. All right, you should still get a PC. <laughs> yeah, basically. That's so. Yeah, I mean, when, just... when are you getting your PC Master Race armband? Because mine still hasn't shown up. I refuse <laughs> to be taken in by my own ironic statement. Thank you. <laughs> I know. I love that. Like that was that was you being a tool, and yet people have. <laughs> People just jumped on board. <laughs> what did you? I mean, uh, you're like Jesus. I mean, there's some of the greatest philosophical ideas in history were intended in jest, like Schrodinger's cat, for example. Yeah, 
Okay, hey, we-, we got to blast some eggs. Oh, like because you haven't been doing much of that so far, yeah. have you? God. God, this is exactly like an MMO, isn't it? Go to location A. <sighs> Waste area three. Okay. Fiddle around with objective item two, item X, Y, or Z, and then come back and hand it in. All right. Yeah, I get it. Incubating egg. Yeah, let's see. Incubating egg. Yep. Okay. Great. Mm-hmm. Mm, yep. There's a. That's there's a certain kill oh, all oh, of them. No. All of them, you say? Oh, there's a few more. I'm not exactly sure what all of them means. Could you yeah. clarify? Yeah. Could you go back? <laughs> Was I meant to kill the one? Oh, fuck. Oh, oh there's some more. Uh, there's some more. Oh, so when you said all of them, you meant all of all them. Of them. Like, well, now all, you, all of them. Now it makes sense. I just, and so, glad oh, you cleared this up. And those three as well. And that one. Oh, I was, had completely the wrong impression. <laughs> Please have more. Oh, well, before, before, they, they, hatch, before oh, they hatch. Well, well clarified again. God, this is like Jurassic Park all over again. Yeah. Go and destroy yeah. all these eggs that will stop them growing into right. millions this of dinosaurs like, like, that are already around. Oh, hey. I guess this game doesn't have problem with the transparencies like yeah, Jurassic okay. Park did. Well, that's the thing. I told you Yahtzee we should download um, SNES 9X as opposed to ZSNES, which is what we were using, which, yep, had problems with transparencies, which yeah, is we what the Jurassic Park was. Yeah, we discovered after we had all that problem with Jurassic Park's overlays that they were supposed to be semi-transparent. Yep. So, I remember we're jerks. I had that problem with Chrono Trigger back in the day using uh, Z SNES, the emulator. Yeah, that's why I went to Z uh, SNES 9X. There's a lot of segments. But then I got like a, a newer version of Z SNES a few years later, and that fixed the problem. So, I don't know. I guess the thing with emulators is that each that games are emulated on a sort of case by case basis. It's such a wacky thing, emulation. It really mm. is. Just, you know. Can't can't properly make a PC pretend to be a Super Nintendo. Well, you're making progress with the eggs thing. Yeah, well, well I did done. good. Yay! Now, I don't think that Yay. was. Uh, if memory serves, I don't think that was all of them, was it? No, no. There's the fifty in waste area two. If memory serves, I'm gonna look at the you map. See, when I get back show, out. showing them to showing all of them to us turned out to have been a useful service. I think we've learned a lot about the value of management. Mm. This is. So I don't suppose you'll be getting an expo now that uh, I think you've been swayed now that there won't be a connect built in. I have zero reason to get new. See the thing consoles. is, the thing is, the more uh, the more times uh, a uh, company sort of desperately throws shit out of the pram and goes, <laughs> "Do you love us yet?" The more it undermines their integrity, doesn't it? Well, I mean, not that so much as I just. I failed to see a reason. Waste area three. All right. Okay. I don't want to. Yeah. I failed it. Uh, I mean, God this, damn it. I failed point, to see a reason to see to, to, get, to get a console. Like I just, I just don't. Yeah. And there's no reason. Um, well, uh, there's no reason why it should have taken this long for them to realize people might have wanted one that didn't have the Kinect built in. <laughs> and I guess that's the point. I mean, there's, it's limited the amount of points they can gain from this because everyone will just go, "Why didn't you do this sooner, then, you yeah. twats?" But having said that, there's plenty of cases of. Uh, Consoles having a rocky start and eventually, you know, just tanking enough shitty sales uh, to be able to overcome the problem and uh, fix the patch the issues out and then become successful later. Mm. Still not a patch on PCs, though. <laughs> this particular generation, it would need some pretty fucking drastic action to change that. Well, I mean, we've discussed this a little bit about, like, how much longer do you suppose the console cycle is going to keep going? I don't think it can last beyond this one, honestly, but I've been wrong before. And a uh, little update I read today. PS4 still outselling the Expo, but Titanfall best-selling overall game. This is the thing, like, I can't... Waste Area... I can't find Waste Area 3. I can't um, <clears throat> justify the expense on exclusives. Like, well, because that's the thing. It's like, well, exclusives sell it. It's like I... Well, Titanfall's on PC as well. Thinking about it, yeah. I'm not oh, sure yeah. if that includes PC sales. You know, it probably does. That's the kind of insidious thing you can expect from these people. The insidious sort of twisting of the message. <laughs> Titanfall, best-selling one this year. Yeah, it's the it's the best-selling game. Oh, there we are. Wait, and sorry, three. and it, you can't play it on the PS4. Mm. That doesn't mean it's exclusive to the Xbox, but uh, we never said it was. <laughs> oh, yeah. Words. Oh, they you can be sh- tricky. Oh, you shifty wordsmith buggers. <laughs> um, I, I know words too. Uh, 
cock gobbling fuckhead. <laughs> Those are two good words. Words that can be used to describe you, marketing person, coincidentally. Shit speckled prolapse. That's another good one. Ew. <laughs> Got an ew out of you. <laughs> after, after I'd fully passed it, yes. Yeah. I love when you... That's one of my favorite experiences, is half hearing something fucked up, and then going, that's messed up, and then going, oh, wait, that's really messed up, and then sort of getting those waves of, like, unpleasantness as it comes over you. Yeah. I've, always, I've always enjoyed that. Of my history of compound swears, another one I'm fond of is mung-wielding toss-fuck. <laughs> Mung is good, because that's one that doesn't get used enough, I think. Yes. I think Mung's an underused. Mung, it's a relatively obscure euphemism for vaginal squirt. <laughs> Discharge. Yes. A splooch. No. Could you use it in a sentence? The floor was ankle deep in fetid spunk and mung. <laughs> fetid is a good descriptor there. I like fetid. <sighs> Always one of my favourites. Fun with words, kids. Yeah. English is fun. Yes. And uh, so our English swears. Yeah. Well, I like English because it's a bastard language and a mog. And you get a lot of fun that way, you know. And like, it's like people ask me what swears are popular in Australia. All of them. If you, if you invent a new swear, we want it. We're like the most multicultural country in the world when it comes to swears. Well, we say that, but uh, then we just say cunt all the time, don't we? Um, yeah, but it's, it's kind of interesting because douchebag used to not be around for ages. But there was a lingual gap in Australian terminology where douchebag had to go. Like, wanker, you'd, you'd kind of give wanker. almost kindness to. Yeah, wanker had too many shades of friendliness to really... Ah, yeah, wanker. Yeah, like, uh, there, there was a buddy sort of thing to wanker. So wanker didn't fill yeah, the I gap. Mean, like, I mean, everyone wanks, so yeah. in many ways, calling someone a wanker is an expression of brotherhood. Yeah, and there was, you know, so, so there was a lot like that. Like, a lot of Australian profanity has kind of friendly connotations in weird ways but like so there wasn't really there wasn't really there was a space that douchebag filled quite nicely over the past few yeah. years it's like calling someone a fucker yeah. I wish <laughs> so lonely yes but cunt yeah there's not much uh, there's, there's not much uh, brotherhood in describing someone as literally some genitals <laughs> I don't know, like, again, in Australia, like, cunt gets used so much that in order to be a bad person, you have to be a shit cunt. Well, uh, yeah, cunt has kind of become, uh... uh in certain areas. Like, yeah, again, it's, it's become... It's regional. It's, it's become quite buddy these days. I mean, what do you call someone if you genuinely want to, you know... There was that case recently of the Australian parliamentarian calling someone a cunt, wasn't Christopher there? Pine. Yeah, what a lovely, called lovely... someone a cunt in uh, Prime Minister's Questions. Uh, uh, I believe he has claimed to have used the word grub. Ah, uh, <laughs> like like he did, but like he did. Yeah, which of course you. I did. don't know. I'm content. Like honestly, I'm can. I'm not that bothered by a parliamentarian using the word cunt, provided it's not one of these situations where they use the word cunt. And then throw an absolute tantrum when someone calls them a liar. Well, you know, you know, calling someone a cunt is an actual show of humanity. Yeah. Un unlike mm -hmm. the budget. <laughs> Zing! Yeah. yeah that's your Croshaw boss. That's you and fucking, you know, yeah, you, Cl Clark, Door, and Croshaw. That's what we need. Just call me Mr. Satirist. Yeah. You watch Clark and Door, don't you? Nope. Oh, okay, you should. I don't know what the fuck you're on about. Um, they're two of the greatest satirists on Earth, honestly. I would really, I would really put them Not up there. Not that you want to speak hyperbolically or anything. <laughs> no, but uh, they're... they're, they're... I'll, I'll show you some stuff after this. Clark and Door, they do... Uh, it's on ABC, but now they're on YouTube as well, so you can see them real easy. So how are you doing with them face huggers? You've, uh, have you killed enough of fi that you fixed the problem yet? <sighs> well, there's the fun part. I don't know. It doesn't sort of just go, hey, mission complete. Oh, you son of a whore. That's not a son of a whore. That's a son of an egg. Fucking... Okay, you fire went exactly through you. did the same thing again. Yeah, because my bullets missed it. Oh, yeah. And again. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, Jesus, back here to just purely to save me in my fucking attempt at Alien 3. Well, unless you had more oh, to well. say on the Kinect issue, I think we're out of topics there. Oh, really? And about ten minutes to go, too. Oh, okay. What do you think about bald-headed chicks? Um, I can go for it. Yeah, me too. I was, I was always quite attracted. Like, I find Ripley of, quite cool. Like, actually, I, one of my... Uh, one of uh, my... One of the things that has fa off. fascinated me in the past is the idea of uh, having, good. having sex with short-haired women. Not gonna build from that. I think there's something fundamentally attractive about uh, a, a woman's upper, upper back. 
And interesting. Of, co- and of course, long interesting. hair. Interesting. That's interesting. Because long hair covers that. Because yeah. I don't have that personally, but I sort of see where you're coming from. That's how very charitable of you to say so. No, but you know, like, with stuff that people are attracted to, it can be a bit specific. Like, people who go apeshit for feet. Like, I don't get that because I'm not a foot person. But, like... Because, you know, when, when, um... I think a bare shoulder... Fuck off. A bare shoulder is a very suggestive thing. I don't know, see, for me, I'm a very facial-oriented person, so for me it's, like, looks. Like, specifically, like, if I'm getting a look where it's just like, I'm gonna mount you, that, that I like that. that well, you that know how we happy. talked about how it isn't really sexy just to have all the goods on display? No. If you can see the upper back, it's like, uh, a bit of a tea, my, my a tits are out round here, but you can't, you can't <laughs> see them. Well, hey. There's the, the promise of boob. Yep, all these boobs I'm in, haven't keeping for myself. Oh, yeah, having yep. some fun round here. Guess what? Some nipple along for the ride. Yeah. I think I might, yeah, uh... Look. Nipple join the party. I think I might juggle them about and put on silly voices. <laughs> I think I'll call you Bob. Hello, Bob. Hello, lady. So, you like a bit of Muppet play with your sex? Yes. <laughs> who's, uh, who's your lovely friend, Bob? Alright, so that's an, that's an interesting subset of the furries, I think. The, Who, Muppet, the Muppeties. Who's your lovely friend, Bob? His name's Betty. <laughs> Betty, Bob. Bob. Yes. Betty. Yes, hello, I'm Betty. Bob and Betty booby. <laughs> <laughs> Have you met our friend Christopher? Next time I see you with a girl, I'm going to ask if, <laughs> if, if you've met Bob and Betty yet. Shut up. <laughs> totally going to do that. Totally going to get you in some kind of trouble with a lady. You know, the other, the other thing that's... Uh, I wouldn't say I have a foot fetish, but um, for some reason, I'm not... I find porn is lessened if the subject is still wearing shoes. Yeah. I, I tend to like it more if they've, if they've got bare feet as well. But I, I'm, I'm not turned on my feet by themselves, but I think... It's you more know. of, yeah. It's more how a, a meal misses something if it doesn't have salt, but not having salt still not killing it. I guess there's a free... There's a sort of a f- essence of free-spiritedness to going around with bare feet. Oh, God, help me in my attraction to hippie girls. <laughs> yes. Why? Why am I attracted to hippie girls? Yellow I hate myself. F- bare feet and yellow flower-patterned sundress. Yeah. You just go wild, don't you? And uh, well, uh, opposites attract. I know. That's why I'm attracted to outgoing women. <laughs> well, someone, someone in the in the partnership has to be the outgoing one. Well, yes. I mean, if you're both uh, withdrawn, then uh, that's going nowhere, is it? I love how these is always degenerate into us talking about our, like what we find interesting sexually. Well, maybe it's because we're t- two bachelors in the primes of our sexual lives. The weird thing is, I've gotten, you know, I've been told by people, and people I don't even know, that it's kind of interesting, which I find sort of, I, I, I sort of get, because I'm a big voyeurist in terms of, like, just, What's not sexually, t- but just seeing people when they think they're alone, or just seeing people be them, you know? I like I like to see a person, I like to hear a person talk about shit that's fucking, you know, weird about them, it's interesting to me. So you're saying you like to spy on women in the toilet? <laughs> exactly, word for word, precisely what I was thinking. I assumed That's, as much. You're yes. just, yeah, you, you've that cut the... to the heart of that matter. I just, just shit in front of me. Just that do it. Subject, just fucking yes. just. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Don't you know? You don't need to. Well, it's not necessarily a scat fetish. That's just no, know, that's, that's, wanting, that's not wanting to it's... see people at their most vulnerable and unguarded. It's the privacy of it. I yes. can see you. You don't actually want them uh, squatting over your face and uh, dropping deuces. Into no, your well, open that's mouth. just weird. You <laughs> fucking sicko. You're not a fan of the glass coffee table arrangement. Uh, uh, why? I, I recommend a friend asked a friend of mine See, this said, is what happens when we run out of topics <laughs> oh no a friend of mine who works with chefs said one of their chef friends goes oh someone showed me two girls one cup last night that's the grossest thing I've ever seen and he asked me what was something grosser that he could show him so I was like oh download swap.avi <laughs> <laughs> I'm pleased to report I've seen neither but only because I learned of their reputation before I actually saw the video. Swap.avi is a hard one to sit through. Uh, well, I don't intend to, so thank you for confirming that position. Yeah, don't. Don't watch it. But if you have a chef friend who is sick and wants to see some messed up shit, then... Here's, so here's a question. Who's your favourite director of an Aliens film of the four? <sighs> okay. Let's just fucking disregard Aliens vs. Predator films. Yeah, let's ignore those. Uh, okay, so in terms of director, director outside of the movies, the Alien movie specifically? 
Just because just Fincher just... did Fight Club, and I really love that. But at the same time, the French dude is one of my favorite. Um... And then James Cameron. Yeah, James Cameron. Like that's what I mean. Like James Cameron does amazing sequels. So yeah, we've yeah, you know. been over that. Avatar two. I don't know. I think Terminator one holds up all right. Oh yeah, I'm not down on Terminator one. Terminator two was just that was harrowing. You know, it taught me about myself. It was. Uh, I'm out of bullet bullets. I wanted to tell you about yourself. Yeah. Um, that but I you are just... a robot from the future, as <laughs> we've all as we've all long suspected. Not from the future. Yes, yes. I'm you're in... made from old T800 parts. That's why you're incapable of emotion, amongst yeah, other reasons. Yeah. That's why I'm the one who always has to get flustered on these things. <laughs> well, Some, look, someone has to carry the audience. Some okay, look, when 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 you have emotional difficulties, when you have emotional difficulties, controlling emotions becomes important, and then you go too far with that and become a cyberman. But there are reasons to have emotions as well. Yeah, I don't. I'm not. I don't think I'm a emotional. I just. Well, I think you I'm, come I'm across peculiar. as it in these videos. Yeah. Well, I mean, these videos aren't these. These videos aren't you. It's like people who That's, think they know you from zero punctuation. That's why people say you come across as smug, man. Yeah. Look, it's like saying it's like someone saying they know you from. Oh fuck. Yeah. You look how dead you are. In the it's lava. the same as when someone says they know you from zero punctuation and thinks that you're like that in real life. The amount of times I've seen people walk into the bar and just be confused by who you are because you aren't a sweary, talky person. You're dead in the lava. That saved a bit of time. <sighs> yeah, game over. Oh yeah, yeah and they have Hick, uh, not Hicks, um, uh, fucking Bill Paxton from Aliens say game over, man, at that point. Do they? Yeah, you couldn't hear it because it was no, down. No, the TV down, but presumably. But yeah, they decided the to put in that soundbite because it's a classic. Well, since you've put the controller down in defeat, shall I have a crack? Yeah, fuck it. This is fantastic. Ah, uh, we should do these tag team ones more often, because I get, like, confused trying to play games and talk at the same time. Yes, you're not a big on multitasking. No, no, I'm fucking not. I can nail one task if you give it to me, but if you give me three things, I will spin around in the corner and crash. I'm just not, I'm just oh, hey, not you can skip the text. Um, yeah, but the text tells you where you gotta go and what you gotta do, usually. Well, fuck is... it, I'm just gonna walk around randomly anyway. Alright, oh, that'll be fun. Oh man, these controls are ass. Yeah, that's... <laughs> now, try and turn while jumping and see okay. how fun that... Well, while you're doing a, a, a sort of projected jump. Way. Yeah, so that's... That's some wackiness. Way. Well, that's that's uh, good, because uh, it gives you a means to totally decelerate by just knocking left and right. Um, but yeah, these, you know... You can't. I, I don't think you can know somebody from you know a video. I but, call this know. move the lawn mower. Mow that lawn. Okay. The thing is, the lawn mower is unreliable and will just miss some face huggers. So. Alright. Okay. That's how you duck. Yeah. The squat walk. Da, 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 da. Why are you singing popcorn? I don't know. It's my <laughs> default. <laughs> okay. In my mind now, just that's. It, the popcorn is just in your head. Like, yep. that's just the the the, 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 yep. the the elevator music of your brain when you're not doing anything specifically. Yep, it's never gone away. That's fantastic. <laughs> that, is, fuck, that explains a bit, but it's fucking great. <laughs> that's obnoxious. Yeah, that's... Oh, there's ammo, I didn't realize. Okay, um... Well, I'm fucked. Oh, no. Whatever the Y button is, is your flamethrower. Oh, yeah, that's a grenade. You don't, oh, you don't, well. you don't just want to squat those out everywhere. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this That's is this is what I mean. It has recurring enemies, but um, anim ammo that runs out, which is a bit of a, like you, I, I think the ammo packs sort of respawn as well. But like that is annoying. It's yeah. It's like why why not give me something that doesn't do a lot of damage, but at least like a melee of some description. You know, give me that. That's one of the things I didn't like about Dark Souls Two was the enemies stop respawning after a while. Oh, did they? Yeah. If you like do the same area like ten times. And killed all the enemies in it. Then uh, the enemy will eventually stop respawning. Whatever that happened, I'd always feel kind of guilty. That actually makes me feel a little feel guilty. Like uh, this person, this thing has gone forever. And then I go through the dungeon; it was all <coughs> completely deserted, and I was like, <laughs> "I did this. I I have removed life from this now once I become death, the destroyer of worlds. From this once sprawling environment." Uh, oh, I'm fucking bored now. Yeah. All right. Blue Ripley says goodbye. Bye bye, Blue Ripley. Bye bye, Blue Chick Ripley. Chick from Farscape. I saw you standing a Lipley. <laughs> Nipply? It doesn't. Well, that doesn't rhyme with the moon, does it? Blue Nipley. There we go. Nipley. Find it on SoundCloud. So, any final thoughts, Gabriel? Um, I recommend against thinking you know Yahtzee from Zero Punctuation and me from these. Yes. 
I mean, I'm only a spree killer, not a serial killer. Get it I, right, as or I he'll fucking kill you. As I sometimes imply, yes. <laughs> Gabriel is exactly how he talks here in real life. Though. Yeah, it's dead on. It's every, every presumption you have about me is just accurate, yes. presumably. Everyone else in the world hates him because he's a smug cunt as well. <laughs> Bye. Impossible? No, it can't be an impossible wolf. All right, so oh, get out, go down the. Let's see go. how we do. Let's go on. Let's do. Let's 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 get to the action. Please wait for no reason at all. <laughs> no, logging off. Well, it's good that they set up her network password in the time she arrived. Okay, this is bullshit so far because there was only one alien in Alien Three. That's why it was called Alien, alien rather yeah. than Aliens Three. Oh, aliens Two. Um, yeah, so now there are a fucking shitload of them. Uh, I remember it was, it was trying to breed, wasn't it? Because that's what they do. Try to breed. Yeah, this, uh, much like a lot of things, takes um, some liberties with the... Yeah. Liberties with the uh, source material. Yeah. yeah. I was going to see what... Um, this must be quite a low-gravity world from the way you're jumping uh, sluggishly. You jerk. No All acid right, well, blood sprays, then. Uh, I think that does come into it at some point. Because that was a big mechanic in the Aliens vs. Predator games, and uh, Colonial Marines, of course. Couldn't kill things too close to them, because yeah, okay. you might lose a single oh, point of health. There's no tough Colonial Marines going to be slowed by, like, acid that burns through metal. <laughs> They're fine. Ah, oh, saved a guy, check it out. All right. I'm sure he'll be fine. Yeah, he's, he'll be, he's safe. Yeah, you're good, right? You can just flash teleport away. I yep, suppose I just is, collected some shit. This is looking fairly bog standard platform movie tie-in. Yeah, I mean it. Shoot the things and jump on stuff. Yeah, it's it's not a very platformer was basically the default state for tie-in game back in the day. Yeah, before first-person shooters roamed the earth. Home improvement Home had improvement. a platformer. <laughs> I can't shoot down while I'm in the air. Why are you always so... ...what it was, and the kind of strange permutations that went through it. Because originally at the end of Alien 2, like, because, you know, the... Aliens. The, aliens, that's it, yeah. Not Alien Cause, Well, the tagline for, you know, Alien was in space, no one can hear you scream. Yeah. Yes. Um, they were going to build on that. There's, I think there's even promo posters still out you can find pictures of that suggested Alien 3 was going to take place on Earth. Yes. And they went was, through a few scripts, didn't they? Yeah. And... Well, that was the first script was it was going to take place on Earth. Well, that was pre-script even. The idea was that Alien Three, the rest of the trilogy, the aliens were going to get loose on Earth, and it was going to be like just madness and yes, craziness. Yes, 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 yes. Um, then it, then Alien Three became something really fucking bizarre and distinct. And amongst other ideas they had, it was going to take place on a wooden monastery floating in the middle of space. I heard that as well. Yeah, which. When you think about what Alien 3 finally turned into, it's just like... You can see that the, the genesis of that idea. Yeah, there's still, yeah. Yeah, there's still elements. It, it just turned into like Lip Ripley with a bunch of male prisoners, <laughs> in, including Phil Daniels, of all people. And uh, Paul McGann, the oh, yeah. uh, eighth doctor, who played Gorick. And a number of other, ooh, what was he in actors. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of those faces. Um, there is, like, Alien 3, judging it against the rest of the series, I don't think is a great movie. J judging it like... F there are some good moments in it, though. Like, I don't know. Like, it's not. Oh great. yeah, the little girl's dead yeah. as well. Yeah. So much for all that work you put into the saving her. All that effort. Let's just undo it. Um, negative capability. Ah, oh, poor Bishop. How euphemistic. Um. And and so, yes, so here we yeah, are. Yeah, no, yeah, but, So here we are. Ripley's crash landed. She's the only survivor from all the survivors from Aliens. All that struggle was pointless. Boo hoo! <laughs> Everything was pointless. This is a side quest. And they brought Alien with them on with the shuttle, and it's going to fuck shit up. Yeah. So there were two um, face huggers on the shuttle. One of them got onto Ripley, and she has a, a queen nestled inside yes. of her. Of course, Wayland Yutani are going to come and claim the aliens so they can profit them from them somehow. Because Wayland Yutani <laughs> are right up there with the Umbrella Corporation. <laughs> started uh, started as the Umbrella Corporation, I think. There was a bunch of mergers. Yeah, basically. It's complicated that, yeah. that uh, you know, owners and co-owners. And... All right, now this wasn't my original choice of game. Well, so... that was a bit of a story jump, wasn't it? <laughs> Crash landed on the facility, and then bam, shit's, shit's fucked. Yeah. Hunt will be hunted. Pressure point. All right. So oh, I have to so there's op yeah. other optional missions. 
I'm quite reminded of Metroid by this game so far, intro-wise. Yeah. Imagine Metroid, but where all the fun's been drained out. Oh, so it's like sort of, it is sort of Metroidvania y. Yeah, there is. Things. It's. You select missions, you have different goals, um, so, you know... That's quite I mean, ahead of its time, isn't it? Yeah, uh, the execution leaves a lot to be desired, the this game, game plays very this sluggishly. This game's just looking great so far, <laughs> I can't imagine how it could get worse from here. Okay, so i got to get down to cell block three and cell Yeah, block let's get four. down and rescue them all. That exclamation mark has totally pumped me up. Come on, let's do it. Let's kick ass. When you're ready. Okay. When you're ready. Alien corridor. I need to find how to get to cell block three and four. Medic oh. bay. Well, now it's minor, to, now it's cell get... block four. All right, there's cell block four. Well, now right. it's getting kind of Assemble dry. Ball. Big wash, some eggs. Bug wash. Curious. Right, prisoner. Prisoner and, and cell block four. All right. Well, there's cell block four. So where the fuck's cell block three? All right. Maybe it's maybe it's in cell block four. We'll get down there and have a look. So maybe, that's where I am maybe now. Maybe cell block four is connected to cell block three. And okay, that appears to have a. Do you suppose that's an? Yo. Word. Well, I think that's the best intro we've ever done. What we're we playing, <laughs> Gabe? Um. Well, as part of my uh, memorial video game series dedicated to. People who've passed who I enjoyed. Um, we're playing Sit Alien 3 on the SNES. Serious? How many of these are we doing today? Um, well, i got to think of a game for Philip Seymour Hoffman, but uh, aside from that, we're uh, pretty good, yeah. So we're playing no. Alien 3 on the SNES, which is an incredibly boring game, but features the uh, wondrous creations of the now-deceased uh, Swiss lunatic H.R. Uh, Geiger. That's the one. Who is... Uh, Famously the designer of The Alien. Uh, the designer of Alien, um... Designed to look like a huge knob. <laughs> yeah. He just went, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make a whole species built around rape and male sexual inadequacy problems. He was big on knobs, was old Geiger. Well, just... Knobs and flesh generic. Yeah, gen genitalia in general. Like, it was just lots of penetration in a lot of his landscapes. And pretty female faces Twisted surrounded in with, pipes. Yeah. Twisted into pipes and snake pipes and pipes that became other faces. Now, if I remember Alien 3 correctly, the film opens with the trashing the whole franchise. <laughs> yeah, that's actually um, in the original script. <laughs> it's just... Uh, Higgs survived. Oh, wait, no, he didn't. Bam. Nope. Let's ruin all this. Um, it's actually interesting because uh, David Fincher directed um, Alien 3. Yes, of Fight Club and yeah. uh, other things. Fight Club, yeah. It's really the only thing you need to know. Um, and he's had some interesting things to say and about seven. making Alien 3. Uh, and Alien 3 is another one of those really sort of fascinating Hollywood stories of how it wound up being one. Shit, at arcade games. Every single time you brought one, you just walk into every single hazard. Oh, uh, no, it's like... Watching Ghostbusters back was a chore. Well, mostly because uh, the aim is to try and get through as much as I can, as quick as I can, and I always figure that just tanking damage... Well, you're not gonna finish it, we realise that. Well, you know, now. But, you know, yeah, I, I wanted to know. try and see as well, much of the game as possible, so... Well, fuck that. How about this time you just show off your absolute gameplay skills? Yeah, alright. This'll be fun, viewer. <laughs> you know what? If, if you're gonna make fun of me for this, next like the, the ne next pick I'm doing is just gonna be fighting games I'm really good at. I, I've in the past told you to do that, because really? I've watched you play fighting games you're really good at, and I find it incredibly boring to watch. Alright, sweet. It's just That's... smack, 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 combo, 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 oh, you won again. Move I'm on. I'm gonna do a series of fighting games. Shitty, shitty fight. Oh, you can get health back. Oh, that's great. Right, why, cool. why not? Show everyone the games you are actually good at. Oh, those are clips. Okay, cool. What, like uh, YouTube? Yeah, YouTube clips. I have collected nine YouTube clips. Um, nice. Yeah, if I collect more, I get uh, uh, the ability to comment faggot under all of them. Is there a mission for upping your subscriber base? Yeah, uh, oh, I can shoot from the ladders. Nice. Um, Desperately cloying for subscribes and likes. Hey, fuck you. Okay then, let's talk about something completely other than the game. Okay, How so I can make week? amazing space jumps. How was your week? Um, okay, well I, for my movie, I watched uh, Jodorowsky's Dune. Which, um, Okay then. Well that was, you know, that was my week. I, I, I go to uni, my week's not Must interesting. Must be a bloody long film. <laughs> um, Jodorowsky's Dune would have been a bloody long film. <laughs> 
So how is how does that differentiate from David Lynch's Dune? Well, it's interesting because.